Acceleron Learning, life experience accelerated. On deck right now, financial literacy and financial ratios 101. Hello and thanks for joining us, I'm Ryan Jackson. This unit will discuss the significance of financial ratios, what they mean, and how to calculate them. First, what is a ratio? A ratio is a mathematical calculation that's an expression of the relationship between two numbers and may be expressed as a fraction, a percentage, or a decimal. Inferences can be drawn about the financial health of a company, an individual, or a particular endeavor using ratio analysis. A ratio illustrates the magnitude of a relationship between numbers, and magnitude has meaning. Even though we'll spend a good chunk of time talking about ratios from a business perspective, nearly all of these concepts can be applied in your personal financial life. We'll spend some time discussing ratios that are specific to personal finances. Let's look more closely at these ratios. First, the activity ratios. Accounts receivable turnover is calculated by dividing net sales by average net accounts receivable. Why do we care about this number? We care because this number tells us something about the quality of sales and how quickly customers are paying. This matters to a business because sales that do not generate cash are not really sales. Inventory turnover is calculated by dividing cost of sales by the average inventory carried by the company. This number matters because it tells us how quickly the company is selling the items it buys for the purposes of resale. Items that are purchased and then not sold are not good for business. Asset turnover measures the amount of assets necessary to generate sales and is calculated by dividing net sales by total assets minus any depreciation, of course. The ideal asset turnover ratio, infinity divided by zero, means unlimited sales using no assets, but this never happens. A more reasonable goal is to enlist as few assets as possible to generate as much income as possible. From this, you can conclude that bulking up the balance sheet does not necessarily indicate that a company is making any money. Now we'll look at the debt ratios, liabilities compared to assets, or total liabilities divided by total assets. This tells us the percentage of assets that are financed. We hope this will be a number less than one. Otherwise, we're carrying debt that is greater than the value of assets. This means we are underwater. The debt to equity ratio is calculated by dividing total liabilities by total stockholders' equity. It measures how much of the company's assets have been supplied by owners as opposed to creditors. We like to see that owners have supplied at least some of the assets, but the number has more meaning when compared to other companies that are in the same industry. Times interest earned measures a company's ability to pay interest as it comes due in order to maintain good standing with creditors. We start with net income, subtract out interest expense and taxes, and divide by the interest expense. We very much want this number to be at least one, and probably a lot more than one, in order to be sure that debt will be serviced properly. Liquidity and profitability are the two other ratios that matter to us. We'll start by looking at three liquidity ratios. First, current ratio. This is calculated by dividing current assets by current liabilities. We definitely want this number to be greater than one because current liabilities must be satisfied or paid from current assets. A current ratio of less than one means that there's not enough assets available to pay immediate bills. The quick ratio, or acid test ratio, is a stricter version of the current ratio and takes into account only cash and near cash in relation to current liabilities. 
Since we want the current ratio to be higher than 1, we would expect the quick ratio to be even higher. Working capital is calculated by subtracting current liabilities from current assets. In a healthy company, this number should always be positive. Working capital tells us how much the company has available in current assets to be used in current operations. Now we need to look at three profitability ratios. Everyone loves a profit. Operating margin percentage indicates how much operating income is generated by each dollar of sales. It's defined as the difference between sales and expenses divided by sales. Operating margin is a measure of core profitability before non-operating expenses such as taxes. We expect the operating margin and its associated percentage to be a positive number. Profit margin on sales measures how much net income is earned on each dollar of sales, or how much each sale contributes to the bottom line. Return on assets, or net income divided by total assets, measures how well management uses the assets entrusted to them by the shareholders. Next up, we'll take a look at an example of ratios for two well-known companies, Home Depot and Enron.